This is Danny Bobro, President of AIM Dental Marketing, welcoming you to this installment of the Practice Perfection Web-Based Education Series. Today's presentation is entitled, Stop Working on a Moving Target. Relaxed and cooperative patients are just minutes away. Millions of people avoid going to the dentist because of fear and anxiety. Even those who routinely visit a dentist report experiencing some level of anxiety. Patients who delay or avoid dental treatment can, as our attendees know better than most, extend beyond pain to far-reaching systemic health consequences. For dentists and their teams, patient anxiety adversely affects your business, your clinical efficiencies, and your stress level. Today's presentation elucidates the numerous factors contributing to the anxious response and their clinical manifestations, such as gagging, excessive salivary flow, tongue battles, startle responses, stall tactics, muscle tension, and more. By the end of this presentation, you will learn about an advanced neuroscience technology which has been proven to rapidly, safely, and predictably relax the midbrain stress response without drugs. By safely eliminating patient anxiety, this technology will liberate your patients from stress and fear while improving your clinical outcomes and practice profitability. Jim Poole is president and CEO of Solace Life Sciences, the neuroscience company that makes NuCalm. Jim and I met via a mutual friend and owing to my membership in the American Academy of Dental Practice Administration, where I actually heard him present and first experienced the NuCalm system for myself. Dr. Gary M has practiced dentistry in Maryland for over 30 years, is on the faculty of Dentist's Oral Conscious Sedation, otherwise known as DOCS, and taught at the University of Maryland for more than 15 years. He's joining us today to share his and his team's experiences with the new Calm system. I've been super excited to bring this presentation to you because I've had the pleasure and privilege of experiencing the new Calm system for myself as well as getting to know Jim, David, Kenton, and the rest of the support team at Solace Life Sciences, who do a tremendous job following up with uh, any inquiries or questions that I've had. I invited Jim and Gary to share their story with our subscribers because their offering represents a unique and hitherto unavailable solution to one of the greatest challenges in dentistry today, removing fear from the equation. This includes discomfort on both the part of the patient as well as practitioner and team. This topic is also of particular interest to me because as one whose job it is to grow the practice, primarily by generating new patients, we know that what happens after the patient is in the dental chair has a great deal to do with the practice's growth. Clearly, if fear is keeping a patient from accepting treatment, nobody wins. By overcoming that barrier, everyone benefits. Before we get to today's event, I want you to know that Practice Perfection webcasts run for around 90 minutes. While attendees are in listen-only mode, we invite you at any time to submit your questions or comments using the question button on your screen. We will allow time following the presentation to get your questions answered. If we do not get to your question during the webcast, we will see that they're answered shortly thereafter. Also, because this presentation is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording, I hope you will not feel the need to take copious notes and instead just sit back and relax, which after all is what tonight's event is all about. But do feel free to submit any questions via the uh, question box. Attendance at this presentation entitles you to receive one and a half hours of continuing education credit. Shortly following the webcast, you will be emailed a brief survey with instructions on how to receive your CE. Participants are cautioned about the dangers of incorporating techniques and procedures into their practices if the course has not provided them with adequate clinical experience to allow them to perform it competently. And with that, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome my friends, Jim and Gary. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, Gary, can you put your um, phone on mute? Please. I will. Thank you much. 
So good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on this evening. I know we're a couple days away from Halloween, which is a great business development opportunity for dentistry. Um, these evening webinars are a challenge for all of us. I know uh, everybody probably worked hard today, and now you're going to sit in front of a computer and hear about applied neuropsychobiology for 90 minutes. So I will do my best to uh, try to keep you awake, engaged, and your frontal cortex filled with good, rich oxygen blood. And we're going to be speaking tonight about relaxation and stress and the midbrain stress response and anxiety and fear. So let's get started. The problem here is stress. And what is stress? It is a physical, chemical, or emotional factor that causes bodily or mental tension that can alter an existent equilibrium and is a major factor in disease causation. In fact, in the literature, over 95% of all diseases today are catalyzed, accelerated from stress. This is some recent information from the American Psychological Association. You know, anytime you look at this, these data, it's, you find it interesting, but a lot of the impetus for stress are typically the same. That would be money, work, the economy, family responsibilities, relationships, personal health. Oops, I think somebody's not muted. Gary, are you muted? Gary, can you mute your phone, please? Gary, I'll I'll send him a text. <laughs> okay. I will hold for a second until that stops. In recording these, I'm sure Danny can go back through and eliminate some ancillary noise. But Gary's off the grid. He's gone rogue. He must be stressed out. Apparently. So let's get back to it. So the economy, family responsibilities, relationships, personal health, housing costs, job stability, these all seem like usual suspects and definite catalysts to create stress amongst each of us and all of us. And stress I find to be rather uh, unique. Stress is an intimate relationship that we all have. Everybody on this phone has had an intimate relationship with stress for your entire life, probably starting at four, five, six, seven years old. What I find interesting about stress is that this is an intimate relationship we rarely share with people. So if I wake up tonight at two in the morning perseverating over something, I rarely share that with whomever. Um, it's something we own. It's something that is near and dear to us. It's something that challenges us. But there is one universal truth known to be self-evident, and that is if we don't address stress and manage it well, it will address us and manage us. So getting back to this data with the American Psychological Association, I think the biggest eye-opener here is really simple. Our most stressed-out demographic today, and this surprised me, are the youth of America. Our children, I've got three girls, 13, 11, and 8. Our children are more stressed out than any of us, which to me is a sad indictment on our culture. That is not how I was raised. I want to create a protected environment for my children to evolve their mental acumen, their emotional health, their psychological health. I certainly don't want them to feel more stressed out than everybody else. It just doesn't make sense. And then you stop and you start to think, why is that? Why are our youth more stressed out than everybody else? Well, they're growing up in an age that we're not used to. The acceleration of technology advancement is incredible. We are exponentially growing down this technology curve to a level that's never been sustained. The news, the fear mongering on the news and the way that news creates learned ADHD and time horizons that exist around five seconds. But I know that if you watch CNN or you watch the local news, very rarely will you turn off the news and have a sense of peace and serenity in your heart. It just doesn't exist. And then lastly, it's our food supply. By all accounts, we're no longer eating food. It's another sad indictment on our culture when foreign countries will not import our goods and services. It's typically a red flag. And we know this. We know the incident rate of our high acid diet, which creates metabolic acidosis and all of these disease states that we're seeing a high proliferation of. A lot of it has to do with our food. 
and later in this presentation we'll speak to the inhibitory neurotransmitters or the balance that we're not getting in our diet. So as I mentioned, this universal truth, these are the physiological impacts of stress. And this is what our future holds for each one of us on this phone, unless we die in a tragic accident or something. Our body will break down. You know, the path to illness or disease often begins with stress. And then it's further accelerated by confounding variables around stress. So the more we stress, the more stress hormones are produced. The more we stress, the worse we sleep. The more we stress, the more inflammation occurs. And if this imbalance remains chronic or unaddressed, eventually the body's ability to maintain homeostasis is overwhelmed, leading to a state of disease where your body and cells begin to attack the weakest and most susceptible organ systems. Increased production of free radicals, greater oxidation of free radicals, and impaired activity of antioxidants. Tendency for connective tissue to weaken, increased free radicals generated by chronic inflammation. And then it gets down to the cellular level, but not only the cellular level, it gets down to our mitochondria. Literally decreased efficiency of cellular ATP energy production, causing impaired organ function. So when you look at this list, we are going to get this. And it's predisposed genetically, and it's predisposed environmentally, and it's predisposed what we do and how we manage stress. So I cannot emphasize the importance of managing stress, period. And you look at this list, and it's scary. Your nervous system, this long-term impaired stress and our inability to manage it effectively will lead to development of tumors, cerebral hemorrhages, aneurysm, strokes, dementia, circulatory system, obviously everybody's known the correlation between cardiovascular disease and stress, endocrine system, adrenal fatigue, thyroid malfunction, diabetes, immune you know, immunosuppressive diseases. And then this last one is the most obvious to me. So nervous stomach, nausea, bleeding ulcers, spastic colon, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease. Do you really think that 50 years ago we had this proliferation of these autoimmune or immunosuppressive digestive disease states? We didn't. But we continue now because we're not eating food and we're not managing stress. So let me take you back to the autonomic nervous system and the sympathetic and parasympathetic response. So dominant sympathetic response is our normal waking state. We're in sympathetic nervous system dominance right now. But when influenced by stress, anxiety, time restraints, it typically changes how we interpret our environment. Everybody on this phone knows that when we are ultimately stressed out, we are not a pleasure to be around. We are irritable, we are impatient, we are distracted, we are tense, we are out of control. That's the impact stress has and being sympathetic nervous system dominant. So now let's think psychologically. Psychologically, how is stress impacting us? It reduces productivity. There's no way that you're producing at your best, most efficient, clear of mind when you are stressed out. It doesn't exist. We can talk later about the physiology of why. It impairs your judgment. Of course it does. Anytime you're in conflict, anytime you're in an interpersonal relationship and cortisol starts generating in your tummy, call it rumbly in the tumbly, or you can feel it, or you can feel blood flow to your face or your lip twitches. It's impairing your judgment. That's the emotional override of stress. Increases mental confusion. And this is probably the most important piece of the whole equation. When you are stressed out, it compromises restorative sleep. And for those of you on the phone who are getting into dental sleep medicine or understand really a lot about sleep, you'll know that as a study, scientifically, it's only about 23 years old, which doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? As humans, we need sleep. You can't go without sleep. You will die without sleep. And when we're stressed out, it compromises restorative sleep. But restorative sleep, as we will discuss later as well, is the only time that your cells restore. It's the only time that your cells clean out toxins. It's the only time that your cells do the maintenance required to keep your cellular function optimal, your organ health optimal. So if we get poor sleep night after night after night, we're done. We'll start breaking down. And then lastly, but certainly not surprisingly, stress leads to addictions. This technology we're going to speak of tonight was developed for two specific profiles of human, post-traumatic stress disorder and addictive disease. 
And the big white elephant in the room of addictive treatment centers is their inability to help the folks that are there to manage stress, to create coping mechanisms to help them when they get out because you're not going to stop stressors. You're not going to stop job issues, family issues, health issues. You have to understand how to manage them or you will go to whatever dopamine piece of the puzzle your brain wants. And it doesn't matter if it's drugs, alcohol, food, nicotine, sex, sugar, caffeine, it doesn't matter. It's, you're going to sate that piece of your brain chemistry. Parasympathetic state. This is pivotal to what we're trying to accomplish. And the new calm system, which we're going to speak to tonight, drives parasympathetic nervous system dominance. Now, parasympathetic nervous system dominance is difficult to articulate. It's hard for me to tell you what you feel like just before you fall asleep. But it's probably easier for me to tell you what you feel like about 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Thanksgiving Day when you've engorged yourself with the most awesome food ever put on your plate. And you've probably had seconds, maybe had a glass of wine or two, and you are literally in a paralysis state. You're probably lying on your back on the floor. Your top button's unbuttoned. You're watching football. People are parading all around you. But what, what, is, what happens to you? You are fully cooperative. You are calm and still. You are indifferent to your time and environment. So after an egregiously large meal, when most blood flows in your digestive area trying to process the food, or just before you fall asleep, sympathetic nervous system state. Now, when you are in this state, you are physically incapable of having an anxious response. It doesn't mean your mind can't think of something that would create anxiety, but the physical manifestations and how the body responds to anxiety will not operate. You can't have an anxious response in parasympathetic nervous system dominance. So why dentistry? I'm the CEO of a neuroscience company, not a dental company. It's simple. We have a problem. We have a problem in the United States of America that needs to be addressed. It's called anxiety, stress, and fear, which are the dominant psychological factors behind patient behaviors. And as Danny alluded to, an anxious mind avoids dental treatment. And avoidance equals higher risk of disease, higher health costs, lower quality of life. And we are all getting more and more astute to the connection of the oral systemic health link. And we know that periodontitis leads to systemic health issues. We know that anaerobic, anaerobic bacteria in the mouth will get into the blood stream. We know this. We know that you will have a poor quality of life if you do not take care of the oral cavity and your gingiva. We know this. So we have to do something about it. But we're not doing a great job right now because there are 321 million Americans walking the United States today and 60 million are not going to the dentist at all. 60 million, one in five. That's atrocious. I just did a lecture last week and I said, you know, what are we doing about this? Where's the ADA's campaign to the general public saying, hey, this idea of correlating pain with a dental visit is gone. That might have been 50 years ago. Between advances in technology and, and techniques and training and all the stuff that's going on, dentistry isn't like that anymore. So where's, where are these campaigns? How come most Americans equate pain with going to the dentist? So how does anxiety, fear, stress make patients behave in a dental operatory this is what everybody on this phone who works in the dental community calls your everyday business environment i don't danny doesn't we're not dentists i don't go to business meetings where these people are doing weird behavior gagging gagging is not a normal response okay i didn't go to a business meeting yesterday and someone started gagging doesn't work that way. That is a physical manifestation of the stress response in the dental chair, impairing your ability to do your best work. Tongue battles. People don't realize how strong the tongue is, but every dentist, assistant hygienist does. Excessive salivation. Clenching jaw. It's really hard to get access in the oral cavity when the temporalis and masseters are just locked down tight. Stalling and uncooperative behavior. I make this joke a lot when I lecture. I say, you know, it would be really interesting if you took a camera and put it in your parking lot of your office because you would see some very bizarre social psychology behavior. You would see people looking in the rear of your mirror trying to convince themselves that they have the courage to get into your door. You would see this. 
You'd also hear tire tread as people are peeling out as they're splitting out of the parking lot. Okay? Some aren't passing the test. Yeah. Some are not passing the test. Clutching and grabbing. This one, this next one here is, is creates anxiety for me and I'm not a dentist. So as far as we can tell in the literature and in logic, dentists are the only medical practitioners that tolerate sharp instrumentation surgery on a moving target. That doesn't make any sense. So it's not if they're going to move, it's when they're going to move and can you predict that they're going to move. Why is all this happening? You take stress, and now we know, as we're living in the second great age of anxiety, the first being after World War I, you take time, which is our most precious commodity. Nobody wants to take two hours, three hours out of the day to come see you. It's already an inconvenience. And then you add anthropology, meaning that we're anthropologically conditioned to protect our mouths as a means of eating, as a means of expressing intimacy and communicating. So I can shake your hand all day and say, hey, great job. And I can be even more intimate and touch you on the shoulder and say, well, wow, great job. I reach for your mouth, you're moving. So this is an anthropological issue designed to help us feel secure in an environment. So when you ask an adult to lie on their back, open their mouth, and have a relative stranger put their hands and sharp instruments in your mouth, you are asking to fight the human fight or flight response. So dentists need a safe, reliable way to manage the patient experience. This has been going on forever. And as Daddy alluded to, 82% of the human population has some level of anxiety. Okay? But it's not your patient's fault. This is literally designed into our DNA. The fight or flight mechanism, for some of you at behavioral science or neuroanatomy, this is an unconscious neurobiological motivational system. Unconscious. Remember that. And this is expressly designed to keep us alive when our central nervous system, who has the duty of ensuring all the time that we're safe, your central nervous system is monitoring your surroundings for familiarity and security. And when it feels at risk, it elicits what's called the amygdala HPA axis fight or flight mechanism in the midbrain. Your amygdala is like the Starship Enterprise or flight deck of the fight or flight response. And it immediately fires neurons to the HPA axis, which is the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, adrenal cortex. And it begins to mobilize to protect itself in what it perceives as a dangerous situation. And all of this happens within nanoseconds, and neurons fire from the amygdala to the HPA axis before a single neuron reaches the frontal cortex in your cognition. That's the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is responsible for managing fear, stress, and anxiety. That is one of its primary roles in our brain. I'm going to give you three nuggets here that just by virtue of being enlightened to these will make you a better clinician tomorrow. Number one, an anxious response is triggered whether the threat is real or perceived. What does that mean? That means if you say, hey, 2 o'clock tomorrow's patient, Betty Lou, is just a nightmare. She's just out of her mind. And you know what? It's all in her head because we've never heard her and we've been serving her for 21 years. And that is correct. It is in her head. But the reality is, is the brain does not have a filtration system. The brain doesn't say, hey, this is real or this is perceived. So the body, what I just mentioned, was the amygdala, the HPA axis, adrenaline, preparing your body to fight or flight. This all happens whether it is real or it is perceived. That is the etiology of a phobia. Phobias are irrational. I'm 46 years old and I'm scared of heights. It is irrational. I can't talk myself out of it. My body does weird stuff when I'm exposed to heights. Those people scared of spiders, same thing. So phobia is a really good example of this anxious response, this stress response in the midbrain doing what it's doing, and it doesn't matter. If it's in your head or if it's real, the same physiological response occurs. Secondarily, you have to be removed from the stimulus. So if someone is really depreciating in your chair, and you're kind of at your wit's end, and you're really uncomfortable because, like, I don't know how to help this person, but 
they're going someplace I'm not familiar with, and I don't know how to coax them out of it. Just get them out. Just be compassionate. Make eye contact. Get them out of your operatory. Reschedule. You can't talk someone out of the fight or flight response. And here's why. When we're in the fight or flight response, it is impossible to cognitively process information. This is probably the most important of the three nuggets for you because this will create a lot more efficiencies knowing that when you're in fight or flight, your blood flow has left the prefrontal cortex. Your prefrontal cortex is designed to cognitively process information. So if there's no blood flow there, guess what? You're not processing information. Now this is not to say that your ears don't work, okay? They're still carrying the signal. They can still, still hear your voice. They can't process what you're saying, meaning is they will have no cognition of the discussion you even had. So if it is your standard protocol to do treatment planning before, or after, during, whatever, in an operatory, I highly recommend that you change that. Remember, the central nervous system has a defined purpose in constantly monitoring us for safety and security. We're constantly looking for familiarity and security. In a dental operatory, when we're asked to lie down on our back, open our mouth and have a stranger put their hands and instruments in our mouth, the central nervous system elicits the autonomic nervous system to activate the fight or flight response. And all blood flow comes to protect and stay alive. And no blood flow is left to cognitively process information. So we wonder sometimes why we think we're making a connection, but we're not making eye contact with them. They're lying in a supine position and we're talking to them. We feel like we're connecting with them, but if you looked in their eyes, their eyes would look like a shark. They're cognitively dissociated. So stop. There's nothing you can say that they're going to process. So patient anxiety, according to Dr. Obvious, is bad for dentistry. It compromises patient care. It compromises your profitability. And when I say profitability, we did an audit of 2006 practices in 2007. And we looked at case acceptance. And what we looked at was over a 365-day period, how much treatment was presented and never scheduled in a year. So this is treatment presented, never scheduled, or done. $1,249,817. So my dear friend Omar Reed would now say, hey, congratulations, everybody. You guys are file cabinet millionaires. You have presented treatment to people you love and adore, and they love and adore you. You've presented treatment to them that's going to help them fill a need or fill a want. And they're going to say yes. Half of them don't even know what they're saying. They're just trying to escape, and they're not getting the dentistry done. So when we say fear, stress, anxiety, and this whole equation is costing you profitability, this isn't hearsay. For those of you who are interested in statistics, a standard distribution for normalized 95% statistical significance is 30. This was 2,000 practices. So this number is probably within a standard deviation of $10,000 to your practice. But their excuses are irrational. People not getting dentistry done is irrational. You see, there's a lot of complexities to the human autonomic nervous system, and there's a lot of complexities that don't make sense when you try to dive into this and say, what is happening? What is the root cause? of why this stuff isn't happening. Because 92% of the population believe an attractive smile is an important social asset. 74% believe an unattractive smile will hurt their career success. And here's the coup de grace. 52% of the population are dissatisfied with their smile. 52%. So simple math here. If you had 2,000 patients of record, that's about 1,040 people that you see on a yearly basis that are not satisfied with their smile. Now, this doesn't mean full mouth reconstruction. It could be a mouth color, diastomas, but they are not satisfied. This creates this dissonance. How come they're not getting the dentistry done? Well, we know this. 55% of the U.S. population state that fear is the number one obstacle to getting dentistry done, followed by time and followed by money. So grow your business by removing the biggest obstacles to your success. High performance relaxation. High performance relaxation. And here's how this works. This technology is patented. It was issued the first and only patent in the world for systems and methods for maintaining and balancing the health of the human autonomic nervous system. 
the profundity and depth and breadth of our patent is incredible. We were issued this patent this year after four years of research with Harvard Medical School, NASA, Eastern Finland, and using some of the top scientists, academicians, and clinicians on the planet to write affidavits to the patent office and all of our data. So the autonomic nervous system, as I mentioned, is responsible for managing stress, fear, and anxiety, and we have the only patented technology on the planet for managing and balancing the autonomic nervous system. So this technology is safe. There are no side effects or recuperative time. If you liken this to meditation, for those of you on the phone tonight who meditate, the physiological benefits of new call mimics meditation, though the process is not meditation. And if you know that, and you know meditation, you will know that you can't over-meditate. There's no such thing as having a meditation injury. So if you're meditating, you're not going to have gauze over around your head, leaving your house saying, wow, what happened to you? Oh, I over-meditated. It doesn't work that way. It's predictable. This quickly neutralizes the stress response at the midbrain. We are going right to the source of the amygdala HPA axis, and we are shutting down the anxious response and rebooting the relaxation response. It is reliable and it is simple. If this were not simple, we would not be here. I would not be running this company and I would not be on the phone tonight. There are tons of technologies that are incredibly sophisticated, complex, cool, but they're not simple enough. This has to be simple. So that is the new calm system. Here are the neurophysiological impacts of new calm, and this is kind of the highbrow patent language, but this is rapid induction of parasympathetic hypnagogic dissociative state. That's quite a mouthful. So rapid induction of parasympathetic. So remember, we have sympathetic, which is stress and arousal. We have parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, cooperative, quiet, and still. So rapid, rapid descent into parasympathetic dominance. The hypnagogic dissociative state is about when you lose sense of time and space. So those of you who do meditate over the course of years of meditating, you will get to a place where you can bring your brainwave function to a place where you hypnagogically dissociate and you lose sense of time and space. That's the ultimate healing zone, and that's what this does within minutes. Secondarily, it is sustained, steady parasympathetic dominance throughout the procedure. If this allowed for people to jump or grab or startle, this, and the fact that we've used Nucalm on 400,000 dental patients across five continents with 95% satisfaction, tells you that this does exactly what it's intended to do. When we get you in a parasympathetic nervous system dominant state, you're not getting out. And then lastly, and probably the most important piece of the whole puzzle here, is a rapid return to full lucidity. There's no hangover effect to meditation. So when someone leaves your office, it is quite possible 90% of them are going to feel better leaving than when they arrived, which is completely oxymoronic to the perception of a dental visit, and it's a mind blower. So new calm is like a massage for your brain. As I mentioned, 400,000 dental patients, 95% state they'd do it again, and 98% state they would recommend it to their friends and family. So as Danny, who's an expert in marketing and helping practices grow in an ever-competitive environment, 98% of people that state they'd recommend it to their friends and family is something you want to be a part of. So how does this work? Pretty unusual. It is unusual. Um, in fact, when you say 95% satisfaction in dentistry, people are like, uh-huh. I've never heard that. <laughs> so this works by basically creating patterns that your brain recognizes as relaxation. And your brain communicates with your body two ways, chemical signaling and electrical signaling. So we are going to use chemical signaling and electrical signaling to create patterns that your brain recognizes as deep relaxation. And it's going to start with a topical cream or a dietary supplement. When we came to market six years ago, we used a dietary supplement. After four years of research and development on June 2nd, we launched a topical cream. It makes it a lot easier. You literally apply it on the carotid artery, left and right side, and off you go. This contains inhibitory neurotransmitters designed to interrupt adrenaline. They are generally recognized as safe. And for those of you who are into supplementation and understand inhibitory neurotransmitters, you will be familiar with the main ingredients, which is GABA. Gamma aminobutyric acid, A, and gamma aminobutyric acid, B. These are key inhibitory neurotransmitters that if you don't have them, you won't live. Okay? You don't live without GABA. GABA is designed to interrupt the HPA axis 
and it's also designed at night, this is the inhibitory neurotransmitter that turns your brain off and allows you to go to sleep. So GABA is very important. Unfortunately, standard American diet is so acid-derived and focused and accelerant, right? Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Five Hour Energy, Red Bull, Rockstar. No one's drinking green tea, eating mozzarella cheese, or having turkey dinners. We're not getting balance in our diet. So we literally have to feed the brain chemistry inhibitory neurotransmitters that 50 years ago we probably wouldn't have to do. But that's what we'll do. You either chew the dietary supplement or, like I said, you apply the topical cream, one pump to the left carotid artery, just up and down, one pump to the right. The second piece here is very really interesting. And when you look at the etiology and the evolutionary aspect to the invention of new calm, it took one of the brightest neuroscientists on the planet eight years to figure this new calm system out. And one of the key pieces was he couldn't understand how he could supersaturate the prefrontal cortex with GABA, but it wasn't working. So he went to Russia for several months, and he studied what's called cranial electrotherapy stimulation. This technology has been around for almost 70 years, and it is FDA cleared for the treatment as a standalone therapy for anxiety, depression, insomnia. Cranial electrotherapy stimulation is not TENS. This is a class three medical device, and this is neuroscience. And what this does in the new calm system is it creates cell permeability. Your cell walls are 63% lipid. And we're, through electrophoresis, we're going to soften the cell membranes and open up the receptor sites for GABA. So in the daytime, nighttime, anytime that you're awake, your brain wants adrenaline. Your brain doesn't want GABA. So the receptor sites don't open. So you can eat all the GABA you want. You can go to GNC tomorrow and eat GABA. You can do that all the time. But if without a catalyst to create the cell permeability and to open up the receptor sites, it's useless. This is the catalyst to ensure that the proprietary formulation of the new calm cream is effective, fast, and predictable. So you apply the CES by taking a neuro patch. It goes behind the ear, below the mastoid process, and above the mandible. There's a little soft spot there. It's called the triple heater meridian point in acupuncture, and it's a great access point to the brain. The patches go there. You dial it up to 0 0.1. You do not feel a sensation. Cranial electrotherapy stimulation is subsensory microcurrent in the new calm system. You don't feel it because it's pulsing such a low-level electric signal similar to the brain's natural electric signal and creating cell permeability. Okay, So that's the chemical signaling and the chemical communication of building a pattern for relaxation or you could call this the fuel to help you relax, okay? Now we're gonna get on to the sophisticated neuroacoustic software. This is the electrical signal of Newcomb. We're gonna do some very, very cool sophisticated physics. And we can talk all day about how sophisticated it is, but in simple terms, we're presenting your brain with a beat. And your brain is gonna follow that beat. And your brain is gonna follow that beat down to alpha and theta. Alpha is 12 hertz to 8 hertz, synonymous with rest, relaxation, creativity, being in the zone. Theta is 7 hertz down to 4 hertz, synonymous with cellular restoration, restorative sleep, healing, theta. So when I do lectures last week to integrative functional medicine and we say we bring the brain away function of theta, they know that we've created the coup de grace of the healing zone. They know that to be able to, as a human, create that level of what's called cellular homeostatic meditation takes years of discipline and practice. And to bring your brainwave function to theta is the coup de grace. And that's what will bring your brainwave function in new calm. That's why you feel refreshed. So this is what's called binaural beat frequency following response neuroacoustic software. What you hear, and everybody hears, is classical music. Great. We don't need music, but we wanted music as a distraction and as a carrier to the frequencies. A typical song has about six to seven megabytes. A short song might be four megabytes. The new calm software is 224 megabytes. It gives you an idea of the sophisticated algorithms and frequencies that are embedded in here that are inaudible to the human ear. You can't hear what we're doing. And this is binaural beat. This has been around since 1839. It's amazing when you start looking into all the different elements to Newcomb 
and you start seeing where it all came from and how it all is pieced together with the expressed intent of creating relaxation. So we're going to trick the brain. Your ears don't hear. Your ears are carriers to signals that are processed by the brain to interpret that signal. And the caudite nucleus of the midbrain is what's responsible for interpreting the signals. So if we present in the one ear 112 hertz and in the other ear 100 hertz, when it reaches the caudal nucleus, the caudal nucleus says, wait a second, there's a dissonance here. And it naturally subtracts the difference and you are left with 12 hertz. So that is how we are tricking the brain to present the brain with a beat that you cannot hear. It is beyond my comprehension, the sophistication of this. Furthermore, there are sophisticated algorithms embedded in this classical music, neuroacoustic software that constantly tricks your brain and you will never build resistance to the new calm experience. So brainwave function, high beta is associated with fear and anxiety. So those people that come in and their hands are cold and clammy and their neck's a little red and they're talking a little funny and they're doing a lot of weird social psychology stuff or they're using the restroom a lot or blabbing, 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 their brainwave function is out of control, 23 to 38 hertz. Beta is associated with day-to-day -day wakefulness and for us at 8.40 Eastern time, we're probably at 14. Alpha and theta is where we will cycle the brainwave function. So associated with relaxation, meditation, idleness, theta is the coup de grace with restorative sleep, healing, and loss of time and place. Theta is why next week I'll be working with stage four cancer folks. Theta is why we work with professional athletes like the Miami Dolphins next week. We currently work with 19 professional sports teams. We work with MMA fighters, boxers, tennis players, golfers. And we do this because stress, they're not managing stress well. If they do, they're self-medicating with alcohol. If we can bring their brainwave function to theta, we're going to increase the healing. We're going to decrease the inflammation response, decrease the stress response. Same holds true for cancer. So if you're given a stage four cancer diagnosis, your body's in fight or flight constantly. And if you can't take your foot off the accelerator, you are accelerating your demise. So that is how important the theta brainwave function is. So you turn on the headphones, really simple, and then we have a light blocking mask. You don't meditate with your eyes open. You don't sleep with your eyes open. We are visually stimulated by light. So just by closing your eyes, you will create a relaxation response. And this is a new calm state of mind. So what do patients say about new calm? I love new calm. I'm always an anxious patient. I can't wait for my family to try it. I was so sick to my stomach before my appointment, but thanks to new calm, I felt so calm and so relaxed. That is a 90 degree or 180 degree switch right there. I will never go anywhere else but this office, and I want new calm for all my appointments. We have thousands of testimonials. We have thousands of video testimonials from clinicians and from patients all over the globe. So the new calm process is very simple. We're not here to re-engineer your schedule. We would never touch your schedule or give you any advice on your schedule. We are not here to create this laggard and this lost time. Never. We wouldn't do it. And we certainly wouldn't be successful with 400,000 patients across five continents if we came and said, yeah, we need two hours to relax somebody. It wouldn't work that way. Dentists would throw us out before the first patient is done. So you keep the dialogue very simple. Hi, we have an advanced neuroscience technology here. Would you like to leave here sooner and feel better while you're here? Hi, we have a technology that's going to allow you to relax. It's kind of like having a turkey dinner. Hi, the doctor has prescribed new calm for you today because it's going to relax you and allow him to do his best work. Keep it simple. You're not there to train them on neuroscience. We have plenty of materials, Facebook materials, web materials, printed materials for your office. Let us train people on what consumers need to know about new calm. Is it safe? Is it proven? All that stuff. How does it work? The assistant can get someone set up on new calm in two to three minutes. It's really simple. They sit down. You apply cream or have them self-apply to the carotid artery. One pump on the left artery, one pump on the right. While you're doing that, you can take your neuro patches, put them behind the ear in the soft spot, turn on the CES device to 0 0.1, and that's it. Then you put a headset on, and you say, hey, is this loud enough? You want it to be loud, but not too loud. And then you say, are you claustrophobic? If they say no, you say, great, you're going to put an eye mask on. And in a couple minutes, we're going to get started. Enjoy. That's it. That's new calm. The patient relaxes for a couple minutes. Then you come in, and guess what? You get to administer local anesthetic without having to look into the beady eyes of human fear. Why? They're quiet. They're cooperative. They're still. And their eyes are closed. You begin the procedure. You start working on monks 
or type it out with a pulse, I don't care how you, what metaphor you use, and you cruise through your dentistry. By solving the autonomic nervous system problem with an autonomic nervous system solution, you remediate and eliminate all the obstacles that have gotten in your way of maximum clinical efficiency. You're not going to see gagging. You're not going to see tongue battles. You're not going to see burning through local anesthetic. You're not going to have to, as you're almost done with that crown pep, say, oh, no, I feel something, and pack cord and re-isolate. You don't have to do that anymore because monks aren't metabolizing through local anesthetic. Okay? Fight or flight is metabolizing through local anesthetic. So when you work on someone who's cooperative, quiet, and still, you're going to cruise through your dentistry. You're going to be focused. You no longer have to play chair-side therapist. You're just going to do great work, and they're going to appreciate it. When you're done, you let them sit there for a couple more minutes, and that's it. They get off new calm, and what's going to happen is 90% of the people that have restorative experience with new calm are going to ask for it when they come back for their profi. That's how this works. So what are the benefits? A relaxed clinical environment, faster, safer, easier dentistry. How can it not be? How can it not be faster, safer, and easier? Instead of working on somebody who is in fight or flight, panic mode, dissociated, to working on a monk. Better clinical outcomes. Fee-for-service profit center. This is the only patented solution on the planet. We were approved by the United States military. We were approved by Health Canada. We just launched in Russia, and on January 14, 2014, the new calm technology was approved by the Chinese national government as a safe and efficacious intervention for stress and a replacement for meditation in China. China, who invented meditation. China, who has 3,500 years of medicine, approved new calm as a replacement for meditation. So why wouldn't you charge for that? Increase patient satisfaction, increase case acceptance. Take the fear out. Create relaxation. 55% of the population are going to say yes to the dentistry of the 52% that want it. And then increase patient referrals. So let's talk science for a minute before I turn it over to Dr. Rim. It took eight years, two and a half million dollars of research to develop new calm. The complications are incredible. The sophistication is incredible. And we have tons of literature and stuff for you to read online about it. But let me walk you through some of the stuff that we did to be issued the only patent in the world. Galvanic skin response is a measure of the human autonomic nervous system. And for those of you that understand lie detector technology, that's what they were using. Okay? So when you tell a lie, your, your sympathetic nervous system is aroused, and your skin sweats. Okay? So this is baseline. So you see activity, parasympathetic, sympathetic. And what did we say about new calm? Rapid induction of parasympathetic nervous system dominance sustained throughout. That's a patient on new calm. Now let's get a little more sophisticated. When I say hypnagogic dissociation, what I'm really speaking to is a frequency increase in the alpha-theta crossover event. And we literally can see when someone has now lost sense of time and space if they're hooked up to our monitors. And look at this. So an alpha-theta crossover of the brainwave happens one time in a 35-second period of someone who's not on new calm. The same 35-second period, it happens nine times. At this point, we know definitively that they have now lost sense of time and space and are in a really deep healing mode. Sleeplessness. Very few adults that I meet all over the world will tell me, hey, I sleep great, especially after you have kids and all the other stuff we have going on. So we work with the world's leading statistical biophysicist. His name is Dr. C.K. Pang at Harvard Medical School and the director of the Ray Institute for Nonlinear Dynamics and Medicine. He's been studying new calm since October of 2012, and he and Norton Huang, the NASA scientist who won the Fields Medal Honor, took their data to the Chinese national government, and that's how we got approved. I did not get on a plane, go to Beijing, and tell them to approve our product. The scientists who'd done independent research went and did this. So after years of researching dynamics to lead to better diagnostics, especially with sleep stability disorders, it is exciting to work with a powerful intervention such as new calm. This is looking at what's called respiratory sinus arrhythmia. We're working on the autonomic nervous system. So we want to see what can we do to build resilience to stress. So this is where we're using the Hilbert Huang transform algorithm developed by Norton Huang at NASA to show with exceptional sensitivity and accuracy exactly what we're doing to your autonomic nervous system. 
This is research we just completed with one of the world's leading neurobiomechanical engineers. His name is Dr. Maram Vixen at the City College of New York. This is a brain on Newcomb. It doesn't get more sophisticated than this, you guys. This is using the latest technology available on the planet called finite element method stimulations on an MRI derived head model of an adult male. So Newcomb, as we can see, impacts the deep midbrain, temporal corp cortex, cerebellum, brainstem. Brainstem, vagus nerve, parasympathetic nervous system. Vagus nerve, parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. The vagus nerve serves as the autonomic nervous system highway delivering and receiving critical regulatory signaling to and from the brain to the heart, endocrine, digestive, other critical physiological systems. Okay? The vagus nerve leaves the brain stem, innervates all your visceral organs, manages the heart and the lung, and is responsible for rest and digest. So what are we doing? Oh, Mr. Poole here is talking about midbrain and brain stem. This is what we are doing to the human brain. We are addressing the midbrain stress response, as you can see there, the hypothalamus, the amygdala, and the brain stem. And the red shows the intensity of the activity. The brain stem innervating the vagus nerve, which is dominating the parasympathetic nervous system dominance. This is what we are doing to everybody who uses Nucom. So someone will say, well, who won't this work on? And I say, well, if, do you have a heart? Yes. Do you have lungs? Yes. Do you have ears? Yes. So what is your question? Because this isn't hypothetical. This doesn't choose whether it wants to take care of you or not. This is physics and biochemistry. And the only subtlety or the only variable is how you choose as a human to interpret relaxation. And it is another sad indictment that wherever we go around this earth, people don't know what relaxation feels like. In fact, ask someone tomorrow, how do you relax? No one even asks them that question. They look at you dumbfounded, like, what? This here is the most sophisticated data that we do. So we work with Harvard Medical School and NASA scientists. We do something called heart rate variability, but we're not doing just heart rate variability. We're doing the most advanced heart rate variability on the planet with the top scientists. And I'll briefly just discuss what we do. We take a single lead ECG device. This device captures 250 data points a second, 15,000 data points a minute on you, on your heart signal. We put this on for 15 minute baseline, then we new calm you, then we take it off. We download the data and we send it to Harvard Medical School, who then use nonlinear dynamic frequency domain quantum physics so far beyond my conception to take a report and spit back to us what you're looking at. These are two reports. We've been studying professional athletes in stage four cancer for over a year. And what we'll show is a rapid descent into parasympathetic nervous system dominance by measuring what's called total power, which is the number correlated to your autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system incorporates the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And much like a total cholesterol number, the total power of your autonomic nervous system incorporates both. And much like total cholesterol, the bad is more significant than the good. Same holds true. So the higher the number of the total power spectrum, the more stressed out the individual is. And then we also look at what's some, something called the LFHF ratio. We want to see what's called the sympathovagal balance. We want to see how balanced your parasympathetic is with your sympathetic. So we are in dental. We are in cancer. We are in aviation. We are in professional athletics. We are in addictive disease. We are in consumers. We work with celebrities. But very few companies that you will ever work with work with the depth and the breadth of the clinicians, the academicians, and the scientists that we work with. And we had to do this because when you are forced to prove novelty and efficacy to the patent office, you have a Herculean task in front of you. So we called out the best of the best, and we challenged everybody we could find and said, we don't care what method you use. Just show us that this does what we say it do, does or prove otherwise. That's how predictable this is. Contraindications for Newcomb, simple. Pregnant or nursing mothers don't use the dietary supplements of the cream. Now, fetus and newborns, the GABA receptor site in the brain has not evolved. So it may, listen, it may have an excitatory response. Now, there are friends of mine who are in their third trimester who aren't sleeping. They don't care. 
they will nuke home because they're like, listen, if the if my baby is a little more excited, I don't care. I need to sleep. The baby but, kicks, I won't care, right? <laughs> exactly. For you and I, that's true. Patients with pacemakers <laughs> and trick no, assist devices. As a woman. <laughs> Or brain implants, do not use the CES device. That's it. And for those contraindications, you can use all the other elements. Dr. Holloway, the neuroscientist, did not invent gamma aminobutyric acid. Okay? Your body synthesizes it and extracts it from food. Dr. Holloway did not invent cranial electrotherapy stimulation. Dr. Holloway did not invent binaural beat frequency following response neuroacoustic software, nor did he invent that closing your eyes creates relaxation. What he did was he took four discrete known relaxation modalities and put them together with a level of specificity that prior had never been seen. And it is designed expressly to quickly, predictably, safely relax you. So dentistry without compromise. Deep relaxation is maintained for the entire procedure. Significantly reduces gag reflex, tongue movement, excessive swallowing, muscle tension, defensive posture, stalling tactics, startle responses. Reduces the amount of local anesthesia needed and improves healing and pain management. This is why dental is so important for our company because we have a problem to a solution or we have a solution to a problem that prior has never been fully addressed. If this wasn't a problem, 60 million people would find their way to see you and get the health care that they need. So with that, I would like to say one last thing before I invite Dr. Gary M up. Stop fighting a battle you can't win. I hope we I hope you learned one thing that's really important. It's not about your coping skills. It's not about your ability to connect. It's not about the touch and feel of being close to somebody. It's not about your compassion. You cannot beat an unconscious neurobiological motivational system designed to keep us alive. You can't. But I do know this. This will wear you out. And a lot of my friends who are dentists in their 50s are worn out because fear, stress, and anxiety radiates off patients every hour of every day. So with that, Gary, I turn it over to you, and I would like Gary to share his personal and clinical experiences with you. Well, good evening, everybody. It's really good to hear, um, hear Jim tell all that. That's amazing. And I, I really think my story is probably remarkable because it's not remarkable. Um, Newcom is so doggone reliable that uh, the story that I have to tell is that uh, it's, you know, I think my story is just the same as everybody else's. Um, and my journey started, you can go ahead and go to the next slide here, Jim, thank you. Um, next slide again. So my story has kind of started and kind of with the mindset, you know, I, I heard about this at a conference and I thought, hmm, sounds kind of like we all hear dental, you know, things when we go to conferences and things. That sounds like a little too much to be true and, you know, my cynical nature said, okay, well, I kind of do okay just the way I'm doing it. I've done sedation for almost 30 years, and it's worked well and um, works for me, and I subdue everybody, and I get what I need to do get done, and it works. And um, Then the other part of me said, well, you know, I'm not sure it really matters because uh, there's a lot of choices out there, and I, you know, I, I don't really think it matters. And then the other part of me that kept banging on the back of my brain was like, you know what, I might be missing out on something here. There are things that... You know, you kind of need to check out, and kind of like the little guy down the right-hand corner there. You know, I think we just had to be curious and kind of felt like I was missing maybe having an edge or maybe doing things better. So um, next slide there, Jim. Thanks. So I had to decide between whether this is like a good idea or a bad idea. And also, again, like many times with a, a lot of dental equipment, a lot of dental supplies, and a lot of things we get exposed to, it's like, we feel like we're banging the head on the wall and we're doing the research for the companies that are trying to sell this, this stuff to us. Um, but the great thing about Newcom, I found out from day one, is that you know they do a really wonderful job of training and they really back up what they say and they've done all the hard work and they've done all the head banging and we don't really have to do it. All we have to do is just kind of put the earphones on, um, use the mask and use the CES and the uh, supplements and it works great. Um, next slide. So one of the things I did was just kind of start talking to people that had used it, and I started talking um, to a couple people in the forum that, you know, had exposure to this, and, you know, kind of what I've always thought, you know, and I'm sure many of you have found out that there's really nobody as smart as all of us together, and that, you know, that kind of kind of solves a lot of the problems that we have and try to, decision, you know, decisions we need to make. So the next slide, Jim. 
So what I found out is that this is a proven neuroscience, which Jim has really backed up well with this presentation. That's amazing stuff. Um, I learned a lot more tonight. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, the other thing I learned that was really surprising to me is not just was this a professional device, but I found it to be extremely useful for me personally. Um, that you know, I use it three or four times a week. It really helps me manage uh, being relaxed. It helps me think more clearly uh, if I'm traveling. It's fantastic for helping me get more rest and kind of stay on schedule. And um, the other thing that was really, really nice about this is that the very first thing I did because Newcom um, in their training suggested this is that I had my team use it. And from that point forward, it really was team driven and guest driven because I didn't really have to do anything too much of my own because the team just really, they saw the benefits of it for themselves and they just kind of grabbed onto it and they understood that this was like one of those paradigm shift things. Um, the other thing that, you know, you can certainly charge for this. And my experience has been, I started off in the very beginning thinking I was going to charge, you know, maybe $150, $200 to offset, you know, costs and try to uh, recoup what I invested in the training and invested in the equipment. Uh, however, I found out that I was so much more efficient. Um, it really only cost me about $6 a visit if you prorate this over about, you know, three or four years and with materials and everything. I thought, you know, for six bucks a visit, if I can do 30% more, I'm probably not really going to worry about it. So most of the time, uh, for us, what's happened over the last couple of years is just transitioned into a process where we just uh, do it as part of the protocol and part of what we do every day because it makes my life easier, uh, makes our guest lives easier, and the team likes being more relaxed, and it just makes it a lot easier for everybody. Um, next slide there, Jim. Thank you. So it kind of boiled down to making the decision, what's in it for me? And you know, what was in it for me is that this is an easier, um, more healthy, a healthier and more profitable way to practice. And so for me, I found out that it was just uh, something that I, in the very beginning, this was kind of, I'll say, trying as a supplement with my sedation because I knew that it decreased the amount of medications and things that I needed to use, which made the whole process safer. And one of the most amazing things that I learned is that after all these years of doing sedation, there's a really, really big difference between a patient being calm and a patient being sedated. And sedation, as I've come to find out since I've been using Nucom, is more like uh, just subduing the patient. They're still anxious underneath, um, even though the monitor may show they're relaxed a little bit. Um, if you look at the um, heart rate variability studies, they're still not where they're, they're really not that relaxed. Um, they're just subdued and they just can't express their anxiety. Um, but what I found out with Newcom is that, you know, these people are calm. There's a whole different mentality and it's kind of short circuits the fact that they're anxious at all and they're much more relaxed and they're just, when they're done, they're actually refreshed and sit, instead of feeling groggy and instead of feeling like they've kind of been, you know, you know, recovering from the medication of a sedation, um, you know, experience. Next, Jim. Thanks. So these are my experiences for the most part. Um, I could list probably, you know, a hundred more. Uh, but for me, I think the main ones are that it's less stress for myself and the team. Um, it helps me take care of myself. I use it personally, and it's really a lot better. And you know, as far as relaxing me, as far as, you know, then drinking may not be quite as much fun with your buddies because you're re but you're really relaxed. Um, I found out that. For me, it's very, very reliable, very repeatable, and it's an exceptionally good ROI. Um, get back everything plus more. And our guests, you know, at this point in time, many of them have had, you know, IV sedation, oral sedation, nitrous sedation, um, all kinds of anxiolytic um, procedures. Um, and this has become something that they would prefer to do it this way. And probably 60 to 75 percent of the people that I used to have to use other types of sedation for now I use this um, as a standalone. So you know now it's my go-to starting point instead of something I add on. I start with Newcom and many times that's sufficient and does a really great job and it leaves the guests in a lot better um, state of mind, a lot healthier when they're done than if we do a sedation. Plus they can drive home. Uh, the other thing is my hygienist you know, can use it, and I don't have to be in the room if, as, if, if I was doing nitrous or some other kind of sedation. And the other thing is just becoming guest preference. They just really like it. Um, they're seeking it out now, and because of the great marketing that Newcom's been doing and it's really growing, 
it's just become something that uh, our guests have become a lot more aware of, and they're actually asking for it. So that's been my experiences, and I would just say that the next slide here, Jim. Thanks, sir. Um, for me, it's been a lifesaver for me personally and professionally, and even though what I was doing was working fine, this is so much better. So it's easier, um, it's more profitable, and it's healthier. And really probably the question for everybody on the call is like, what's in it for you? Thank you, Gary. You bet. Um, Gary, before I finish, I just have a couple questions for you that uh, the audience is probably thinking. So you use it personally a couple times a week. When do you find time to do it? Well, what I find best for me is uh, I usually do it in the morning before I go to before, when I get up. I get up pretty early and I might read a little bit and then I'll just go ahead and UConn and then kind of get started on my day. And that's been the best time for me because it kind of starts me out with a real good frame of mind and helps me get. If I've had a really crazy day, um, occasionally I'll use it in the evening, you know, before, you know, when I first get home. And how long have you been using New Calm? Uh, between two and three years at this point. I think it's getting closer to three years. And have you noticed a cumulative impact on your stress and your sleep because you've been using it for so long? Yeah, definitely for me, personally, yes. I would say what it's done for me is that I can chill down a lot quicker, and I notice that you know I go into that meditative state um, much more rapidly. You know, it used to take a little while. Now it's you know before I even know it, I'm already there. So it's kind of like Buddha in a box. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Dr. M, one thing that I really appreciate about his style is he's very methodical. So he didn't buy the value proposition of Newcomb three years ago, just say, hey, okay, great, let me do it. He took his time, took his path to go down and figure this out for himself, number one. Number two, I like the fact that he was training other dentists on oral conscious sedation which means he knows a lot about the GABA receptor site because benzodiazepines, barbiturates, and alcohol bind to the GABA receptor site. So by virtue of his training and his knowledge, I knew he would know more about the biochemistry of what we're doing. And number three, what I liked about Gary is he has characteristically a level of compassion I'm not used to for someone who's methodical and scientific. So he's a great package as a human, and we've actually asked Gary, and we've lent him these multi-thousand dollar HRV devices and we've asked him to capture data for his own publication and it will be the first dental publication that we'll do with the sophisticated HRV, the HHT algorithm from NASA. So go figure. Um, we'll be publishing dental articles on mid-range stress response using statistical biophysicist Dr. C.K. Pang a single lead ECG device and the Hilbert Hewing transform algorithm from NASA to showcase with exceptional sensitivity and accuracy exactly what we're doing. So thanks again, Gary. I know that uh, there'll be some questions after I finish, but let me just uh, put a bow to the new calm system. People say, well, why dentistry? The answer is simple because we can. Um, I'm president, CEO, chairman of the board of this company and the people that we have surrounded ourselves with are all professional, all experienced. My business partner and I used to run private equity portfolio companies for Wall Street banks. So we know how to run companies. We also have been given a gift. I view Newcomb as a gift. I view Dr. Holloway as a gift. And it's up to us to figure out who we want to help most. So dentistry was easy because we knew that the central nervous system did not think lying on your back, opening your mouth was a good idea. And we wanted to prove this. You see, when you take over a company in an, with an invention you did not create, you don't have that emotional attachment to it. I'm not emotionally attached to, new, to Newcomb. When I took this over, I was like, what is this? I love the science. I love the logic behind it. I love the complexity. I love the language. I love the brain. But I'm not buying it. So we put this to the test, and dentistry was the first test we made. And dentistry in the healthcare sector sometimes is viewed as a redhead stepchild, not to us. And let me tell you something that we've witnessed and really enjoyed. We're in professional athletics. 
Okay. Next week, I literally will be with the Miami Dolphins. And Gary offline can share with the other people that we're with, celebrities and stars and all that good stuff. We got there through a dental chair because athletes went to the dentist. And when they tried Nucon, they said, what was that? That got us started in professional athletics. In cancer, what we found quickly was about 20 patients of all of our customers were currently going radiation chemo or just getting out of it. So we started working with cancer four and a half years ago. Aviation, wouldn't you know it, pilots also go to the dentist. And long-haul pilots are constantly compromising their circadian rhythm to a place where they're accelerating their death. Okay? When you see a pilot and he looks like he's 70, he's probably 58. Why? Because they're not sleeping. So we got involved with all of these really cool people and all these cool avenues for us to expand the use of Newcomb through the dental industry. So we have tremendous appreciation for it. Furthermore, we're experts in midbrain neuroscience, anxiety, stress, and fear. So we know the cumulative effect that it has on your autonomic nervous system. And we're here to help you. We don't need to impose our will. We don't need to beg you. We will educate you, and you will take a decision whether this is good for you or not. That's how we operate, and it's a nice place to operate. So I already shared with you the U.S. military. I already shared with you the Chinese national government. But the Chicago Blackhawks credit winning the 2013-2015 Stanley Cups to Newcomb, literally saying without this we would not have won the Stanley Cup. That is a pretty strong endorsement from the only team that you could say is a dynasty right now, having won two of the last three Stanley Cups. We work with the American Health Institute Comprehensive Cancer Wellness Program under the guidance of world-renowned psychoneuroimmunologist, Dr. Janet Ranicki. And we're doing incredible work with cancer patients. People who are so broken, so scared, can't shut it down. And we come in and we give them the gift of peace and serenity. And we give them a starting point or a baseline where their body can actually accept treatment as opposed to metabolizing through everything. So a person comes in for dental treatment, they metabolize through local anesthetic. What do you think it feels like when you're dying? What do you think that metabolism is doing then? So that is, I'll be next Wednesday and Thursday, I'll be working in Florida, doing more research and filling my soul with value and reward that's immeasurable. Pilots and addiction centers. The recidivism rate for people who are suffering from addiction is appalling. And there are direct correlations to the length of stay, 30 day, 60 day, 90 day. Your sobriety will be better the more you're in it. But then you look at the one year recidivism rate and it's appalling. And the big white elephant that we know is the stress piece. So that's what we're working on. The media stuff, we are catching fire. So it's nice to work with a company that's featured on CBS News, ABC News, NBC News, Fox News, Wall Street Journal, etc. We just recently had an article on Friday published in the Malaysian Business Journal where Tony Robbins says, My secret to massive amounts of energy with little sleep and no drugs is new calm. So we were in Las Vegas at a conference and our phone went crazy. And we have about 120 new customers from business people and followers of Tony Robbins from around the globe because he shared his secret of new calm. Cure sometimes, treat often, comfort always. We follow this path and we're all going to be better for it. <clears throat> and this is the economics behind new calm. This is a class three patented clinical medical device. The technology is $6,795. Some may call it expensive. Some may call it inexpensive, knowing that it took three years and two and a half, or eight years and two and a half million dollars of research. Either way, it doesn't matter. That's the MSRP, and it doesn't matter if you're a pilot, professional athlete, celebrity, golfer, oncologist, neurobiologist, cardiologist, cancer patient, and it doesn't matter if you're in Africa. It doesn't matter if you're in the UK, Germany, Russia. It's the same price. The consumables have two paths. One is a chewable tablet which is 20 applications for $245, which is about $12.25 an application. And then the new cream, which has been exceptionally well-received in the marketplace for two reasons. One, you don't have to ask someone to chew a supplement and hold in their mouth for sublingual absorption, number one. Number two, it's really fast-acting, it's deep relaxation response, and it's more predictable. 
that's $395 for 60 applications. So now you're in the $6 range. But you know, dentists love promotions. And we're a neuroscience company. We're not here to change the world and everything we do. We're here to create a category and we're here to share with people that there is an option that this world has. There is something that can naturally lower stress, improve sleep quality without drugs. It does exist. We are it. So when we worked with Danny for this webinar, he's like, um, it'd be really nice if you'd offer my folks a promotion. And we said, of course we will do that. So this is the webinar promotion. It's a new comb starter package. It gets you the new comb system and 80 new comb applications, unlimited training. The resources that we provide are vast. You will never, you will never want for more information. For example, the new comb library has 326 discrete pages. It has videos, animations, audio conferences. It has an hour-long webinar on HRV, heart rate variability in the autonomic nervous system that I showed you. Professional marketing support. The price of this package is $5,595, and you save $1,840. And furthermore, we're not interested in you buying this and it becoming a dust collector with whatever other technologies are hidden. That's not, our, that's not what we want. We don't have time to work with clinicians who don't get it and want to use it. So we know you have to be trained. Yes, it doesn't take much to apply a cream, turn on an electrical device, wear a headset, and put an eye mask on. It doesn't take much at all. But it does take something to stop, breathe, figure out what you want to do, train your team, etc. We're here to help. So we have a $500 training credit because, hey, we want users. We don't focus solely in dental. Next week, so last week we were at a dental conference. I won't be at another dental conference for months. We'll be all over the world, anti-aging conference, pilots, sports. We want users. We didn't get the 400,000 dental patients because we don't have power users. So the promo code is WEBAIM28, and you can call us or email us. The next slide I'll show you later, and simply provide that promo code, and we will honor it. So with that, so let me just Danielle, be clear, Jim. Yes. Yeah, I just want to be clear. Uh, the $500 credit, that's... You're not like waiving a fee for training. You're saying if they agree to do the training, you're going to issue an additional credit? Yes. They're going to have $500 for future supplies if they get trained. We are making right. this, as, as Omer Reed likes to say, we are greasing the tracks for you. Mm -hmm. okay. We've built the foundation. Omer Reed is another, uh, yep, he's another member of your tribe. Uh, I, I met him at the ATPA meeting, and he, he is a big fan. I can, I can speak for him having spoken with him directly before we agreed to invite you to present here. Many of you may well, know quite, who Omar Reed is. Omar Reed is quite a fantastic human being. Um, I love him. I admire him. It has nothing to do with dentistry. I'm not a dentist. It has everything to do with the humanity of who he is. But what I like about Omar is he's 83 years old, and he's been using this for five-plus years. So it, was, it couldn't have been more than two months ago I was speaking to a doctor who was pretty high on himself and ambitious and young. He says, hey, I'm an early adopter. I take everything. I said, that's interesting. And how come Omar Reed, who's 83, has been using this for five years? And he can barely even turn on his cell phone. So Omar is the man. <laughs> He's a very okay. giving individual. And yes, he thank is. you so much. I appreciate it. Let's, let's do dive into some questions because we did get quite a few here. Uh, the first one is how long does it take for patients to relax in the dental chair? I, I think they mean presumably once they've begun to use new calm. <laughs> Uh, and are there any scheduling recommendations you could offer? Gary, would you like to take that? Um, yeah, I can't kind of go back to the one slide yet. I'd say it probably takes maybe four, four to five minutes for the patient to be ready to be um, for the injection to take place. And I would say as far as scheduling, no, because it saves so much time, we really don't have to adapt any more, adopt any more time to be available because we're just saving enough time to be, kind of make up for it. That's, that's a good clarification, too, because until recently, I wasn't really clear. I thought you had to designate a separate area, uh, you know, and have the person do the NUCOM and then come in. This is administered right at the beginning of treatment when they're in the chair or shortly, shortly before treatment, and, and you just wait for them to, to, to exhibit those signs of relaxation before you start to administer uh, treatment. Correct. That's absolutely correct, Danny, and, and we know this. If it took 30 to 45 minutes, you guys aren't doing it. I don't care how compassionate right. you are. It's completely messing with your schedule. You wouldn't do it. 
The beauty of it is, if you recall the galvanic skin response that demonstrably showed how fast it is, that's what we're doing. Now, it's easy to get confused, Danny, with personal nucleome experience and procedural. So personally, you know, it's, you're going to be there for 20 to 30 minutes when you're doing it in the comfort of your bed or a hotel room. You're going to do it as long as your brain needs it. And it typically takes, you know, over the course of time, about 28 to 30 minutes. You can get a nice boost in as little as 15 minutes. But clinically, this happens within minutes. And I think just another thing I'm, I'm not sure how I Sorry, Gary. Uh, another thing that's really, really powerful, I think, if you couple this with nitrous oxide, it just really um, punches it up like another level, and it really helps a lot. Uh, sort of a, yeah, a cocktail. I, uh, I just wanted to share that I, I have yet to experience this in the dental chair. I have an appointment. I'm going to have my last uh, mercury amalgam removed, and I'm definitely bringing in the system with me to introduce to my dentist. And so I haven't really had that direct experience, but I was just sharing before the call with, with Gary and Jim that while I was doing the new calm uh, over the weekend, I, I had fallen mountain biking and really banged my forearm pretty good. And uh, I started the, so it, it hurts to the touch, very tender. While I was on the new calm, I was <laughs> fiddling with it, and it was remarkable. I mean, I, I, I knew it was supposed to hurt. I could still, I experienced the sensation, but I didn't care about it. It was just remarkable, and I'm sure that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the payoff that you look for in the dental chair. People know that they're having care administered. They're not hypnotized. They're not unconscious. They just don't care. That's a great point, and that's exactly what happens. That's the parasympathetic piece. Remember, we said you can think all you want, but you can't. Right. It's response, and people are lucid. Right. So, mm -hmm. and that's the other thing that's fun about it, because I've studied meditation, and meditation is hard because the minute you say I'm not going to think about anything, that's right. You shouldn't think about anything because if you think about something, and then you're gone. You know, you're thinking again. With this, it doesn't matter what you think about. The system's going to work no matter how hard you try to not make it work. Exactly. Pretty That's remarkable. a really good point. Uh, can you communicate? Well, I sort of answered this, but uh, someone wanted to know if you could communicate with patients while they use Nucom and how do they respond? I just shared my experience, but what do you think, Gary? Or what would you say? About that? Yeah, my experience is I know at first I thought they wouldn't be able to, so I would maybe just uh, pick up the one earphone or something. But I found that um, they they can hear everything that they want to hear. They just don't really care. They just they pay attention to what they want to, and the rest of it they just kind of let it go by. Mm -hmm. And Jim, you gave us some pretty good verbiage, and I think you demonstrated how remarkably simple this is. But uh, one caller, one participant asks, how do dentists discuss and introduce new column with Maybe you could elaborate. So let's start with Gary, because he's been using it for a long time. Gary, what is, what is your assistant or whomever, what do they say? Um, they just say we'd like to help you be a bit more relaxed today. and. This is just a system that uses everything that your body normally makes when it's getting ready to go to sleep, and we're going to help you with that and help you relax, and then they just go ahead and do what they're going to do. And Gary's at the point where people are coming in and asking for it, which changes the whole paradigm. I mean, it's interesting, Danny, and, and we all know this, and there's no um, judgment of dentists, but dentists often overcomplicate and talk too much chairside. And we overlooked that fact when we were training 32 key opinion leaders uh, six years ago. We did 10 months of studying in dentistry with 32 key opinion leaders. Omar Reed was one of them. And I, I visited their office and I listened to them. I was like, oh my goodness, what are they doing? Literally sitting chair side saying, you're going to take chemoaminobutyric acid catalyzed by cranial electrotherapy stimulation and training your brainwave function. It was terrible. They weren't comfortable. They were stumbling. The patient was uncomfortable. And we were like, what are you doing? Nobody comes here and wants to know what's in a titanium implant or what's in nitrous or how an amalgam gets extricated and you put a tooth color composite or um, you cure it with a light. So we got rid of that early on. That was a quick stumbling block. We said, no way. We don't, people don't come to the dentist to learn applied neuropsychobiology. Keep it really simple. Right. They trust you. They wouldn't lie on their back and open their mouth if they didn't trust you. They wouldn't close their eyes if they didn't trust you. So keep it simple. So thanks. For, that's a great question. Right. And it's, it's very important for the team and the practitioner to understand the science so that they believe and are confident in it. Although even there, you know, I'm, 
I didn't really understand it fully. I tried it and it worked, and that was what good for what was what mattered to me, and it's what matters to everyone. As you said in your slide, Gary, it's everyone listens to radio station WIFM. What's in it for me? Uh, here's a question: uh, How do the cream and the supplement vary, if at all, in terms of the response or experience for the patient? I'll give you the scientific piece, and then Gary, who's used both, can give you the clinical observation. Scientifically, um, we lose some yield in sublingual absorption. So the dietary supplement were three large dietary supplements. It tastes kind of like a vitamin C. And you asked people to chew them and hold them in your mouth like saliva for up to 90 seconds. The longer you hold it, the more sublingual absorption, the faster the response. The cream negates all of that. The cream is designed to quickly get into the bloodstream, cross the blood-brain barrier, into the prefrontal cortex within seconds. So what we have scientifically is a higher yield and a faster onset. So Gary, what have you noticed between the two? Uh, yeah, the cream is a lot faster. I mean, it's great. It's, and it's much, the, the guests like it a lot more. They don't have to deal with the taste. They don't have to chew up anything. You just rub a cream on and away you go. I mean, it's, it's really, really rapid. Yep. And there's no residue. It gets absorbed and it's gone by the time they're done right. with their treatment. Right. Right. All right. Uh, in terms of disinfectant, can the equipment be wiped without corrosion? Yes. And uh, it's interesting. We're a neuroscience company. We become de facto experts in headsets. I know more about headsets and audio technology than I ever thought I would. Now, when I look at a headset, we started with Bose, and we went to Audio Technica, and we had... MP3 players, we had Apple iPods, we've gone through a lot of different iterations. All we need to do is get this neuroacoustic software to your brain. We now have an integrated headset, it's easy, it's wireless, and it protects our intellectual property. We did that as a business uh, decision, not necessarily as a convenience decision, because when we were approved in Russia and China, the Russian and Chinese culture don't honor intellectual property, and we wouldn't want our eight years and three million dollars of invention to be stolen. So that was a business decision, but it turned out to be a very good decision for all of us because it is an integrated headset with all the neuroacoustic software in it and it's rechargeable. Um, you can wipe down those ear cups ad nauseum and there have been no issue whatsoever. Yeah, it's a good reminder though, I guess I should wipe mine down one of these days. <laughs> I haven't even thought about it. Uh, Next question, when using it personally, how long do you keep the headphones on? For me personally, I, I knew calm as long as, so I, I do it as long as, here's what's interesting. I knew calm tonight because I wanted to have really good energy and uh, this is about the 220th time I've done this lecture and um, I wanted to feel good for you guys. I wanted, to, if you're going to spend time at night, you're going to get my best. So I knew calm at 620. I know, Danny and Gary, that every minute I'm in new calm, I'm healing. I know this. I know the science. I know the physiological impact. I want to be in new calm longer because as soon as I take it off, cortisol kicks in and I start depreciating. I'm going down the wrong path, but I can't stay in there more than I want to, right? You just get bored. When you're ready to get up from new calm, you are ready to get up. You will not stay there. Now, what we have seen in half a million people is a natural biorhythm between 28 and 30 minutes. So if you're taking very good care of yourself, you're going to get great sleep every night that you knew calm that day, you're going to sleep like an angel. And so the more we do this, the more we balance our autonomic nervous system. The more we do this, the more we increase stress resilience. The more we do this, the better we sleep. So we're taking this negative pattern that most of us have been living in, which is high stress, poor sleep, high stress, poor sleep, high stress, poor sleep, and we're reversing it. You're getting stress management, good sleep, stress management, good sleep, stress management, good sleep. So you're going to new calm. When you first get it, you're going to do this for a few days in a row or four or five times in the first couple of weeks. We have a lot of years of unresolved stress to manage. This isn't a miracle worker. This is neuroscience. And then your brain and body will gravitate to about 28 to 30 minutes. Gotcha. What do, I think Gary touched on this a little bit, one of you did, but what do dentists charge for new calm? Well, Gary shared his um, philosophy, and many of his peers share that same philosophy. 
for us, we were a little blinded because the people we chose to work with out of the gate were 32 of your top dentists from around the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. So to be a top dentist, you're going to have success at some point, and money was never the key driver. So the 32 dentists we started with six years ago for 10 months didn't charge. We thought, well, maybe that's the de facto standard, but it's not. So here's what we know. We don't know the specifics of every practice, and Danny, you know this because um, you work with a lot of dentists. We don't know the socioeconomic status of your patient base. We don't know the competitive landscape. We don't know how many dentists are on your block. We don't know any of the, of the dynamics. So we simply say, hey, you can do whatever you like. You can increase your fee and just wrap it in. You can, some clinicians say, hey, if you sign up for this treatment that you need, you, you, you need an implant or you're going to, or we're going to have to, you know, carve down some more teeth and do a bridge. If you sign up for this, I will throw in new call for the entire treatment plan gratis. Or some people say, hey, this is a $90 treatment and we subsidize half of it because we love you. Some people charge $50. Some people charge synonymous with nitrous. We have periodontists who charge $125. And just yesterday, an office in Texas said, we charge $350. And we get it. And I said, okay, how do you do that? They say, you're going to have sedation today. You're going to have sedation that lets you drive home by yourself, or you're going to have sedation today that you need to get a ride. That's it. Would you prefer? That's what they say. Yeah. So that's what they get. So it's completely up to your clinical and business philosophy. But if you give this to your patient, let them know that you personally have invested in the world's leading neuroscience technology, that you are compassionate and filled with compassion to bring in the world's greatest technologies to ensure they have a great experience. Don't let that opportunity slip. Because if you give something to somebody for free, they value it as nothing. That's right. Yeah, it's got, it's all on how it's presented. And you can even experiment with presenting it, really conveying the value and just saying, but because you yet to try it, but we're so confident that it's going to make for such a more pleasant experience for you. And that's what we are all about. Uh, we're going to absorb the cost of your first uh, exposure treatment with NuCalm, which means you're not even necessarily limiting yourself to offering it gratis, uh, you know, ad infinitum, which is another way to consider uh, approaching it. I have a lot of clients that do that with, uh, with oral DNA and with uh, oral cancer detection and, you know, and people ask for it and they, they may well be, be happy, only too happy to pay for it, especially when you put it that way, you know, we can give you sedation that you can't drive home or we'll provide you sedation that you can drive home. It's your choice. That's pretty, it's pretty brilliant and it's pretty simple. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> you have choices. And here's what we know, because I've run businesses in pharmaceutical, medical device, biotech. In the healthcare side, choices don't really exist. But dentistry, a lot of this is fee-for-service out of pocket. Never overlook that. People are used to paying for line extensions. So if you're doing oral cancer detection or whitening, whatever, it's not atypical for them to pay for stuff. That's, that's the way the industry is today. Take advantage of that opportunity, number one. Number two, right. we all know that there's a tremendous threat from corporate dentistry. In capitalistic societies, when there is a need, and there's certainly a need to operationalize and increase efficiencies and billing and all that stuff with a dental practice, these companies are going to hire Harvard Business graduates, and they're going to build models of efficiency, and dentistry is not going anywhere. So what do you have to do as a private practitioner? You have to provide value that your consumers want, not what you think you're good at. You have to deliver what they want. Newcomb fits that bill perfectly. Why? People want something all natural. Why? People want the opportunity to relax. Omer said it best. He said, who would ever thought that you're literally going to come to the dental office to relax? On Wednesdays, he opens up his hygiene operatory and people in the community of Scottsdale go to his office to relax. It's brilliant marketing. So this is a tool is. to help you differentiate and compete in a marketplace that's not getting easier. Amen to that. And uh, la only time for one last question, which is, can it help for anxiety disorders such as OCD? Wonderful question. Any disease state out there is comorbid with anxiety, okay? This technology was developed expressly to treat 
PTSD, and addictive disease. There are seven diagnosable anxiety disorders along this continuum, and PTSD and addictive disease fall on the farthest end, the most challenging brain science on the planet. This can help someone who's been traumatized, whether a war veteran or a sexual abuse victim, or it can help someone with addictive disease. It can help somebody with OCD. Now, we would never make the claim that this is going to cure you of your ills, but we work with neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. We work with cancer. We work with dialysis. Why? Because every disease state, like we talked about early on tonight, is catalyzed and accelerated by the stress response. And I just spoke to someone who has early onset of Parkinson's. You know when you get that diagnosis, you now have tremendous amount of stress. You have social anxiety. You have anticipatory anxiety. You have a myriad of issues. This will slow that whole process down and give you an opportunity to fight. That's a great question. Yep. Thanks to the uh, all those that uh, submitted questions and to uh, everyone who spent time with us. And especially, I want to thank you again, Gary and Jim, for delivering on my promises, and also for agreeing to extend that great offer for PracticePerfection.com registrants to learn more about how to remove one of the greatest barriers, keeping patients from receiving the care they want, need, and deserve, as well, and you just said it, as a terrific tool for differentiating yours as a practice that is truly committed to the care and comfort of your patients. And uh, don't forget the great analogy Jim shared between New Calm and a Thanksgiving turkey dinner. <laughs> I think that's a winner. <laughs> uh, that promo code, once again, folks, is WebAIM. 28, as in October 28th, WebAIM 28. And in a few days, you'll receive an email that will give you more uh, information uh, with instructions on how to receive your hour and a half of CE credit. And in keeping with the Thanksgiving season, that's funny, I didn't even plan that, but uh, it is coming <laughs> up, and we thought, it made, we thought it made sense to share one of the most underutilized tools at the health professional's disposal for growing his or her practice in a highly image conscious and cost effective way. Accordingly, please mark your calendars for our next webcast, which will be on Tuesday, November 17th at 7 p.m. Central Time when my very special guest will be Ms. Linda Miles, founder of Linda Miles Consulting and the Speaking Consulting Network. Linda's name is probably as well recognized as Omer's. She is one of the most highly respected and recognized personalities in dentistry today. And her focus has recently been directed now at showing practices how they can do well by doing good in support of a worthwhile cause. I hope you'll be open to learning how cause-related marketing can help you connect with far more new as well as current patients than you ever imagined in this high-impact presentation entitled Cause Marketing 101, Do Well While Doing Good. And to show our thanks, we're going to be giving all who register a complimentary 240-page book entitled Win-Win for the Greater Good. It's a step-by-step -step guidebook that will ignite your practice's revenue, reputation, and social impact while creating a greater good for society. Until then, this is Danny Bobro thanking you for your continued commitment to practice perfection. And especially, again, thanking you, Jim and Gary, for a terrific presentation. It's our pleasure. Thank Goodbye, you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Bye-bye.